Hello, my name is Fiona, and I'm a certified teacher and a praxis coach with Study.com. Are you planning to take the principles of learning and teaching grades K to 6? This is test 5622. Praxis 5622 covers four content areas. This problem set covers the subtopic content area of students as learners. Let's review some of the types of questions you may encounter on the exam. Let's jump right in. Problem number one. Which of the following best describes a component of knowledge construction in the classroom? Let's look first at the definition of knowledge construction. Knowledge construction theory is the process of building knowledge through various learning activities, using students' existing knowledge, and then building on that through the introduction of new ideas and concepts as a way of scaffolding students' learning. It's not simply copying or learning facts. It's the students coming up with their own concepts and ideas as well. So let's look at the possible answers. A, it helps to build on concepts students already understand. And that is part of the scaffolding and building process. So let's put a circle around that, but let's continue. It focuses on maintaining student interest in the classroom. That's not what this is about, so we can cross that off. C, it allows students to work together and share information. Now, this might be a learning activity used in knowledge construction in the classroom, but that's not the end of it. So we can eliminate that one as well. D, it helps a student to focus when introducing new topics. That has nothing to do with this, so we can eliminate that as well. And as I suspected, A is the correct answer. It helps to build on concepts students already understand. Problem number two. A fifth grade teacher reviews the permanent records of the upcoming students at the beginning of the school year. The teacher notices anecdotal notes from previous educators of the tendency to adhere to rules. The teacher also noticed observations that the new fifth grade students show a pattern of speaking during instruction. Which of the following might help the teacher establish a standard of conduct? A. Draft a set of concrete standards before the new school year that includes firm consequences for speaking during instruction. B. Create general rules that include specific times when students can and cannot talk. C. Create a rule with new students regarding the importance of a quiet environment for all peers to learn. Or D. Hold a lecture with students explaining what will and what will not be tolerated in the classroom. Some ways or tips for establishing a standard of conduct in a classroom include collaboration between teacher and students to develop a meaningful standard of conduct that addresses the specific problem and then to establish consequences for violations that are negotiated between the parties. So with that in mind, let's look again at our answers. Draft a set of concrete standards before the new school year. So before the new school year means for the students arrive, so we can eliminate that because it will not be collaborative. B, create general rules that include specific times when students can and cannot talk. Again, they're not part of the conversation, so the students are not part of the conversation, so that is not ideal. I'm going to jump to hold a lecture with students explaining what will and will not be tolerated. Again, Lack of discussion with the students is not going to help their buy-in 
to the new rules and regulations so we can eliminate that? And the correct answer is, in fact, C, create a rule with new students regarding the importance of a quiet environment for all peers to learn. Problem number three. A student has been diagnosed with a learning disorder and an IEP has determined that modified assessments are necessary. The student's language arts teacher receives an updated copy of the student's IEP with this accommodation. Which of the following strategies should the teacher take for the next multiple choice vocabulary test to best align with the student's IEP documentation? Provide the student with a copy of the vocabulary words before the test. Unless everyone in the class has that, it's not a good option and we can eliminate that one. Now the next two, allow the student to complete the test in another classroom and provide the student with preferential seating to minimize distractions. Both of these might be appropriate accommodations, but not specific to a multiple choice vocabulary test. So we can eliminate those for that reason. Finally, provide the student with a modified test with fewer answer choices. So in general, for multiple choice exams, students with learning disorders who require modifications can benefit from the reduction of choices as fewer choices will still allow the student to demonstrate their knowledge. So the answer is D. Problem number four. An instructor is teaching their kindergarten students basic alphabetic principles through interactive games and catchy songs designed to enhance their learning experience. The children actively participate through singing along to the alphabet songs, answering questions, and identifying letters when called upon. Which of the following cognitive processes are these types of activities designed to engage? Perception, language development, problem solving, or memory. Perception. This is learning information through sensory experience and then responding to it. I think we're going to put a circle around this because singing and actively participating, those are sensory experiences, so this is perhaps the answer. Language development. This refers to the communication and expression of concepts using language. Mm, this also seems like a possible answer. Next, we have problem solving. This is the ability to use prior knowledge to reason and problem solve. That isn't the case here, so we can eliminate that. Memory. This is the storage of information into short-term memory or long-term memory. And while that might be happening here, it's not the primary objective. So we are going to eliminate that. So now it's perception or language development. So let's look at them again. Learning information through sensory experience and then responding to it or refers to communication and expression of concepts using language. Alphabet songs and games help young children to acquire vocabulary, phonetics, and communication skills, all of which are components of language development. So language development is, in fact, the answer. They are learning communication and expression it's not about the sensory experience and responding to it. So definitely language development. I hope I was able to clarify the subtopic of students as learners so that you now have a better understanding of the types of questions you can expect to find on the exam. Please remember to like and subscribe to this channel so that with study.com's help, you will feel confident and prepared on exam day. Bye for now.